Stardew Valley has a ton of crops to plant on your farm, and from those, a ton of different ways to make money off of them. Today, we'll be taking a look at one crop that has the potential to make insane profit, and obviously, I'm talking about the ancient fruit. Anyone who's played the game enough to know about ancient fruit knows the hassle with them. But the ancient fruit is a special little guy. Unlike most seasonal crops that require constant attention and replanting, ancient fruit can grow in every season except, you know, winter. It's also special in that it produces a fruit every 7 days, and they have a pretty high sell price. Sounds amazing, right? Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but it's not always that easy. Ancient fruits have an initial growth stage of 28 days, meaning you won't have harvest for an entire season after planting them. On top of that, a major problem is just how difficult it is to get the seeds and plant them in the first place. So let's talk about the pros and cons of ancient fruits and then draw our conclusions about whether they're actually worth our time. Something that's going to be pretty consistent throughout this video, I'm going to be comparing it to a pretty popular and kind of fan favorite crop, which is starfruit. And it's no wonder why people prefer to plant them, it's the second highest selling crop and it grows pretty quickly. Just as a little disclaimer, for the sake of simplicity, we're going to be comparing the prices without factoring in skills like tiller or artisan that adjust the final price of things. We'll also assume that you pull up perfect iridium tier crops every time because you're such a good little farmer. So if we look at both crops at face value, then yeah, it's pretty clear that starfruit makes you more money. An iridium starfruit sells at 1500 gold, where an iridium ancient fruit would only sell for 1100 gold. And the same goes for the wine. Iridium starfruit wine, which you can only get from aging, sells for 4500 a bottle, where iridium ancient fruit wine sells for 3300 a bottle. But the star fruit has a seed cost of 400 and the ancient fruit has a seed cost of zero. As a reminder, star fruit wine before you've done any aging sells for 2,250 gold. So if we take out the seed cost, we're looking at 1,850 gold profit. 1850 divided by our seven days in the keg results in around 264 gold profit per day for star fruit wine. Now let's look at ancient fruit wine, which sells for 1,650 gold. Ancient fruit wine also takes seven days to produce, but has no seed cost since you don't need to replant it. 1650 divided by our seven days in the keg comes out to around 235 gold per day for ancient fruit wine. So you're probably wondering, how can ancient fruit be better than star fruit if it's less profitable in every way? Well, if you haven't forgotten, ancient fruits regrow every seven days without needing to be replanted after that initial 28 day growth phase. On the other hand, a star fruit takes 13 days to grow before a new one has to be planted, meaning at most you can have two harvests per season with star fruit and four harvests with ancient fruit. Meaning with time, you will outpace the number of star fruit you produce and your profits are going to soar. So we want to know how much time exactly. Let's say you planted both an ancient fruit and a star fruit on day one of spring in the greenhouse. We'll calculate how much money you'd make off of each crop until ancient fruit overtakes star fruit. Don't forget that there are 28 days in a full season of Stardew. After the first 28 days, we'd have zero ancient fruit and two star fruit. 28 days later, we'd have four ancient fruit and four star fruit. 28 days after that, we're up to eight ancient fruit and six star fruit. Finally, on day 92, both crops have their first synchronized harvest. And it's here that the value of ancient fruit finally overtakes star fruit and will continue to do so. Clearly, it's an investment for the long term, but ancient fruit is technically the better money maker. While we're making this comparison, let's discuss the best ways to get seeds. You're guaranteed your very first ancient seed by discovering the ancient seed artifact and donating that to the museum. Unfortunately though, that can only happen once and it's only one seed. There are a handful of other ways to get the seeds, but none are guaranteed. You'll need to check the traveling cart religiously because a packet of seeds can appear and they'll sell anywhere from 100 to 1000 gold. The problem is they have a super low spawn rate, having a 1.26% chance to be on sale. You can also always just find more of those ancient seed artifacts and craft them into actual seeds at a 1 to 1 rate. But again, those are kind of rare to come by so this isn't a preferable method either. The only other way you can get your hands on more seeds is by crafting a seed maker. This bad boy can be crafted after you've reached farming level 9, but you also unlock one from completing the dye bundle in the community setter's bulletin board. Plus, there's also a chance to find one in the treasure rooms of the Skull Cavern. The seed maker can produce anywhere from 1 to 3 seeds of the crops that you put inside. So while it's sad to do so, the smartest move with ancient fruit is to sacrifice your first handful of harvest to get more seeds. 
It's depressing, I know, but trust me, it's the best method by far, and it's not all too bad since they do produce every seven days. But comparing to something like starfruit, on the other hand, you can just buy the seeds, like we mentioned earlier. Granted, they aren't sold by Joja Mart or Pierre's store, so you'll have to go to the Desert Oasis and buy them from Sandy at a cost of 400 gold per seed. But regardless, it's clearly far easier to get your hands on starfruit seeds and every other seed in the game than it is ancient fruit. So are they really worth all the hassle? For the casual player, probably not. There are plenty of crops that give you quicker results and have a higher daily profit. So the minimal benefits after such a long period of time probably aren't a deal breaker to any average player. But for the longer, complete, and more serious playthroughs, this is where they kind of make the most sense. The initial setup is extremely annoying, there's no denying that, but afterwards they are very hands off, especially if you grow them exclusively in the greenhouse. And that's what I recommend to do, and that's what I tend to do in my own playthroughs. You only need to plant them once and they'll produce non-stop until the literal heat death of the universe. Not to mention, it's awfully coincidental that they take 7 days to produce and kegs take 7 days to produce wine. If you like convenience, then there's not a doubt in my mind, ancient fruit are worth it. And I'm a lazy dude, so to me they absolutely are. But I can totally see the other side too. Frankly, it's kind of boring to just have the same crop all the time, even if it is technically the better money maker. It's kind of like how you totally can just use every space on your farm for kegs, but then you're sacrificing the beauty of creating your own farm. And some people care more about making money, so that's perfectly fine. The awesome thing about Stardew Valley is that there's literally no punishment for taking your time. You can earn money as quickly or as slowly as you want. So while I presented you with all the facts, in the end it's kind of just how you enjoy playing that decides whether they are truly worth it. Or, you know, you could just farm truffles.